Yo, what is good, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, where every pixel tells a story, sparking creativity beyond limits. Today, we're stepping behind the scenes in the picturesque city of Savannah, Georgia. Today, we'll delve into the art of the running gun photography, utilizing our compact but powerful Godox 8200 flash unit. Did I say that right? I think I said it right. We'll be shooting outside downtown Savannah, doing some yoga poses, then we'll take it inside to the hotel Indigo, yeah, hotel, yeah, hotel Indigo, where we'll um, head downstairs to the exercise room and finish our shoot there with some, um, yeah, we'll just be shooting in there. You'll see. I will be showing you guys how I utilize natural light outside with the mix of strobes. Also, how I use a mobile gimbal by DJI to record video footage for multiple social media platforms. And if you're in a creative community such as this and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you turn on the notification bell and subscribe to the page and like the video. It will really help the channel grow. I really appreciate it. Smash that like button, show your support, and let's dive into this video. All right, guys, let's dive straight into it. Coming at you straight from the heart of Savannah, Georgia, I'm right outside the Hotel Indigo, where today's behind the scene magic is about to kick off. The architecture is stunning. I love downtown Savannah. But you know, navigating around is a bit tricky. Haven't been downtown in a while. Yep, your boy is kinda lost. I'm trying to find the main entrance, but no worries. I gave my client a quick buzz for some directions and he pointed me to the right direction so making some adjustments and can we take a second to appreciate this super sharp footage that we all are looking at right now all credits to the insta360 go 3 camera i've got mounted on the front of my cap it's a game changer if you're in the tech and want to get the lowdown on it i've got an unboxing and review up on my channel right now i'll pop that link up in the top right corner of this video right now so y'all can check it out after this video so the models scheduled for today's shoot have finally arrived and the designated room for our session is now ready for use. We will now proceed to leave the lobby and proceed to our designated room via the elevator where the models will have the opportunity to change it to the wardrobe selected for today's shoot. This will also provide me with the opportunity to organize and prepare my equipment for transportation as well as determine which items I will bring to the location and which items I will keep stored up in the room. I plan to utilize a single light source for my photography setup, specifically the Godox 8200. To enhance the lighting quality, I will attach a compact softbox to the light. To witness the implementation of this setup within a studio environment, kindly access the aforementioned link to view a comprehensive behind the scenes eyewear campaign shoot that I conducted at my studio. All right, so after making the necessary adjustments to the two models and ensuring that they are properly attired, we proceed to the initial shooting location, conveniently situated within close proximity to the hotel. By documenting the behind the scenes footage, I am utilizing the Insta360 GO 3 camera mounted to the front of my head. Simultaneously, my client is capturing my activities using the iPhone 12 securely attached to the DJI OM6 stabilizer. I would highly recommend considering the mobile gimbal from DJI for obtaining consistent and reliable behind the scenes footage. I have also had the opportunity to own the OM5, and I must say that I have a great appreciation for both models. If you are interested in viewing a video demonstrating the usage of this gimbal, kindly express your request leaving a comment below. Upon careful observation, it is evident that both the Insta360 GO camera and the iPhone camera are capable of capturing impressive footage. Personally, I have a strong affinity for the Insta360 camera due to its ability to be conveniently mounted on my person, thereby offering the audience a first person point of view. So currently at our initial location, I am actively searching for the first shot by thoroughly surveying the surrounding area. Once I have the composition I'm excited for, I grab my trusty Godox 8200 and head back over to the location so I can work on my first shot. Next, I'll make a few adjustments on my settings I'll check my aperture, my shutter speed, and I'll also make sure my flash and my trigger are turned on and working properly. After you check your settings, go ahead and take a few shots to make sure your flash and trigger are synchronized and flashing correctly. 
So my client that booked me for the shot was kind enough to help assist me with filming the behind the scenes footage. However, I realized that I actually needed him to help me in holding the flash to make sure I captured well lit shots. I kindly requested him to put down the gimbal so that he could lend me a hand. That's one of the reasons why I absolutely love this DJI OM6 mobile gimbal. They have this amazing feature where the bottom can easily fold out into a tripod. This means you can conveniently place it on any stable surface and get your shot, you know, without even holding it. You know, it's super handy. The net can also telescope out, allowing you to extend its reach, which is really awesome. Next, I asked the models to get into position, and then I started folding the legs on the bottom of the light stand so that it can be held in the desired position that I needed. And just to make sure everything looks great, I'll take a few more test shots of the models to check my exposure and my settings. This way, I can ensure that the lighting is perfect and my client is in a flattering position with the strobe. So while we were setting up the first look, we had a little interruption from some friendly locals who were interested in chatting with my models. Um, I totally understand, but when it's affecting my schedule and I've just finished a long 12 hour shift before coming to the shoot, I have to call it a day. So I allowed them to chat briefly but then I kind of redirected the conversation so that we could focus back on to our work. These guys were having a few drinks and were probably a bit tipsy, so I don't think they fully understood or appreciated what we were trying to do. Uh, if they did, they would have had quickly gotten the information they needed and moved on. Instead, they kept the conversation going, so I felt the need to speak up. Moving along, as you can see, I have my client helping me with the softbox on the right, which is positioned on the left side of the models. This softbox provides a beautiful backlight while I use the sun as the main key light on the left. Can you, can you switch on? I came into the shoot kind of unknowing what the location would be or what it would look like or as far as the conditions of the weather. So I'm pretty much winging it right now. But nevertheless, I'll show you the images I shot after they've been retouched. And here are the models trying different poses. <laughs> if you come down some, I just want to get up, up under the, the uh, yeah, yeah. Hold yeah. right. on. That's like hella people. So after taking pictures in front of the fountain, I thought we had enough for that specific location. As we began walking back to the hotel, I noticed this wall with some foliage on it, and I thought it would be a good backdrop for the next look. So I walked over and began taking some test shots to see how it would look. After making the decision to shoot the models in front of the wall, I directed my client holding the stroll to a specific position with the light and began posing and shooting the models for the next look. Light. Uh, closer. Come in closer. Now. Real. Don't break out and fall out on us.
When I take photos, I always have a second camera ready to record a short video. Usually with my mirrorless camera, but sometimes with my phone. Since I already had my iPhone connected to my DJI OM6, I decided to use it today. The OM6 ability to switch between landscape and portrait modes is fantastic, as it lets me take pictures from two different angles. My client will benefit greatly from this because the footage is suitable for promotion on two different aspect ratios. Watch some of the finished videos along with some of the behind the scenes footage. After we finished filming at the grass wall location, I led them back to the fountain area, which was where we began shooting in the first place, and we continued filming there as well. I will show you both the final footage, as well as the footage from behind the scenes, so you can get an idea of what it looked like. Y'all gonna look, look at the camera. I'm gonna keep going. Y'all want a shot of the water, so I'm gonna do this, but y'all keep walking. And then I'm gonna say, Look, and they all just look at me like that. You heard me? Oh, for real. Because I, I want that water in that shot. And then I'm going to meet y'all right here. Boom. Right there. After I had gotten the shots I needed for the short film videos, we all agreed that it would be best to head back inside. The subsequent series of photographs required would be taken from within the hotel's fitness center, which is located on the premises. Before I could head that way, I had to go back to the room that we had reserved for changing and I had to get some additional gear that was necessary for the upcoming shots, such as another light and another stand. Yeah, like you walking, like you wiping sweat off your face. You know what? Do me a favor and point this. Can you point right there? Yeah, man. like right there. Matter of fact, let me turn this up. This oh, it's a little too dark. I'm gonna turn this up. Uh, the initial series of shots will consist of the models running on the treadmill. I will position them as they are walking and then attempt to take photographs of them while they are actually moving. For the key light, I have the Godox 8200 set up right behind me using a softbox. And for the backlight, I have my client holding another 8200 behind him with a Magmod diffuser attached to it to soften the light. One, two, three. I felt it would be better to bounce the backlight off the wall rather than to have it pointed directly at the back of the models. So I asked my client to point the light directly at the back wall so that we can use the light as a bounce rather than a direct shot at the models to see if I gain the difference in looks. Let me get a backlight pointed at uh. After taking a look nice. at some of the images that were captured, I felt it would be better to bounce the backlight off of the wall rather than to have it pointed directly at the models. Because the concept worked well for some shots but not for others, I had to switch the direction of the light source between some shots where it was pointed directly at the model's back and the others where it was pointed at the wall behind them for bounce. Pointed at the back of her head, thank you, sir. You're just doing your thing. Mm -hmm. 
Moving on to the next series of shots, which were taken on the opposite side of the workout room, I separated the girls and photographed them individually. Beginning with the first model performing on the incline bench press while holding a set of barbells in each hand. Since I have never been in this room before, I had to experiment with the lighting a few different ways before I could find a, a good combination that was satisfactory for each shot. The initial series of photographs did not come out very well because the light was either shining through the mirror or it was just too strong. So I discovered that the best position for the key light was directly in front of the mirror facing the model while the best position for the backlight, which was held by my client, was behind the model facing to the back, towards the back of her head. One second, put it right there. Where's the logo at, right there? The lighting for the second model was very similar to the first, but rather than taking the pictures of her sitting on the bench, we moved her to the medicine bowl. The final looks consisted of the models sitting on the yoga mats, facing in the opposite direction of one another, with the key light on one end and the backlight on the other, while my client stood in the corner holding one of the 8200s pointing down towards them. Thank you guys for joining with me on this behind the scenes video. If this video has sparked some creativity, show some love by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Your questions and comments are welcome, so please drop them below. I'm always open to new ideas for new content, and I would love to hear your feedback on what I'm creating and posting on the channel. Until next time guys, I'll see you guys later.